When one arrives at Melbourne Knights' stadium, it's hard to ignore its Croatian influence. But a new Football Federation of Australia policy is trying to change that. The National Club Identity Policy was launched in June and bans clubs from using foreign names or logos. The Federation says it's designed to promote football as inclusive and multicultural, but a number of clubs have raised concerns over the policy. Two separate complaints have been lodged with the Human Rights Commission, with the Melbourne Knights claiming the policy is a breach of Australia's racial discrimination laws. Pave Yusup is Vice President of the Knights. I think that the creation identity of this club is the club. I think without it, there is no club. Um, it's like disowning your mother or father or pretending you're something that you're not. There's, there's, there's nothing good can, that can come of it. The policy is not the first attempt by an Australian football federation to stop clubs from advertising their foreign heritage. In the 1990s, Melbourne Knights were forced to drop Croatia from its name as part of a Soccer Australia ploy to de-ethnicise the sport. And, and that's what people, a lot of people don't understand, that there's, there's a duality. We want to hold on to our Croatian roots. But at the same time, we're loyal to Australia and, and, and always and, and continually asking our community and asking our people to prove their loyalty to Australia is disrespectful and it's rude. And now me talking about it is upsetting me because I'm telling you that I'm Australian, I'm also Croatian, and I need to prove to you that um, I'm not some fifth column other that's kind of trying to bring down the system or something like that. Despite its strong Croatian influence, many of the players for Melbourne Knights come from a range of backgrounds. Its captain, Ben Suri, is one of them. I've coached the juniors too, and the juniors are not all sort of Croatian Australians. The juniors, uh, you know, anyone who, anyone's welcome to come and have a trial, and, and you'll be looked after, and, you know, and it's, it's a welcoming club, but they've just got a Croatian background. <laughs> The Human Rights Commission is not only assessing a complaint made by Melbourne Knights, but also its sponsor, Melbourne Croatia Soccer Club. The organisation claims the Federation manoeuvred to block it from being a shirt sponsor for the Knights when the side qualified for the FFA Cup. Dan Ma is an expert on human rights law at Deakin University. He says just because the policy appears to single out on the basis of ethnicity does not mean there's been a breach. They must do something, an act, or make a distinction or exclusion based on a, a person's race or ethnicity. That's the first thing. Now, arguably in this case, from the facts I know, that's probably present. But then the second um, and arguably more important component of the test is that that distinction or exclusion um, must be done with a purpose or effect of depriving the other person, in this case Melbourne Knights or their sponsor, of a fundamental human right. The anger within Melbourne Knights was so high after the shirt was blocked, the club strongly considered forfeiting its FFA Cup tie against Brisbane's Olympic FC. But with its players preparing to face off in perhaps the biggest match of their careers, the club decided to go ahead for the game. Our club, people at the club, members, the board, feel very strongly about this issue, and we would have forfeited the game. But our players um, worked hard to get there, the Melbourne Knights have said they will take their fight to the Federal Circuit Court if the Human Rights Commission cannot find a resolution. In the meantime, the policy remains in place. Rusty Woodger reporting.